Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. I am on my cytopathology rotation, and one aspect that has been troubling me is salivary gland cytology. And so let's take this time for us to learn more about the Milan classification. It's divided into six subcategories. The first one is non-diagnostic. What is the adequacy criteria for salivary gland? There is nothing set in stone, but some cytopathologists use the Bethesda uh, satisfactory criteria of the thyroid, which is six groups of 10 or more follicular cells. So six times 10 is 60. So around 60 cells present in the salivary gland. However, just like the Bethesda thyroid system, the Milan system has exceptions where even if you have less than 60 cells, it can be deemed adequate. And they include any atypia, mucinous cysts without epithelium, because that could represent a sinister, carcin sinister uh, pathology, like a low-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma, abundant inflammation, and matrix suggestive of neoplasm. And such tumors include adenocystic carcinoma, basal cell adenoma, adenocarcinoma, epithelial myoepithelial carcinoma, as well as a pleomorphic adenoma. Milan classification two is non-neoplastic, and the main pathologies are sialodenitis, and subclassifications include acute sialodenitis, chronic sialodenitis, granulomatous sialodenitis, as well as lymphoepithelial sialodenitis, otherwise known as LESA, L-E-S-A. Milan category three is atypia of uncertain significance. This is when you have cytology that has some atypia, but it lacks either the qualitative and or the quantitative features um, where you as a cytopathologist are confident enough to call it either neoplastic or non-neoplastic. Then we have Milan category four, which is subdivided into 4A and 4B. 4A is benign and includes pleomorphic adenoma and Worthen tumor with two entities which we will delve into the cytology and histology, as well as 4B, sump or salivary gland neoplasm of uncertain malignant potential. And these include cellular benign neoplasms, including a cellular pleomorphic adenoma, uh, basaloid neoplasms, which include uh, cellular pleomorphic adenoma, basal cell adenoma, adenocarcinoma, and epithelial myoepithelial carcinoma, as well as oncocytic neoplasms and low-grade carcinomas. Milan category five is suspicious for malignancy. And According to the blue book that published the Milan criteria, uh, the purpose of suspicious for malignancy is to preserve the high positive predictive value for Milan category six, which is malignant, because they want to make sure that if a cytopathologist calls it six malignant, that it truly is malignant. And it's important to know and somewhat reassuring for cytopathology residents or residents on cytopathology is that the set of morphologic criteria of AUS, SUMP, AUS is three, four B is SUMP, and five is suspicious for malignancy are somewhat s subjective and at times very subtle. But in general, suspicious for malignancy has higher atypia than either s SUMP and uh, Milan category three AUS. Lastly, six, which we touched on briefly, is malignant. And this includes your low-grade carcinomas, including a cynic cell and secretory, as well as high-grade, that includes salivary duct carcinoma. And then you have entities that have multiple grades, including mucoepidermoid carcinoma, as well as adenocystic carcinoma which is uh, just for your board fodder, it's uh, defined by 6-9 translocation, MIB, and FIB.
Okay, so now that we talked about the Milan criteria, let's delve into pleomorphic adenoma. So this is a diff quick, and your telltale sign is this metachromatic fibrillary stroma that looks like your troll's hair. This isn't the troll I was thinking about, but this was the emoji on my phone. But the troll as in like the troll, the movie, where you have those um, really vertical lined hairs. And it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? But not only that, but you'll have two other elements, including myoepithelial cells, which you can kind of see here, they're embedded in the stroma. If it were kind of organized around the stroma, then you would want to think about adenocystic carcinoma. So you got those myoepithelial um, cells, as well as your ductal cells, which are kind of hard to see here, but let's delve into... Okay, um, this is a pap stain. The one we just saw was a diff quick stain, and you can see the myoepithelial cells here, and they're kind of just enmeshed in that um, fibromyxillary metachromatic stroma. And then here's an H and E stain, and that stroma looks more chondromyxoid. And then you have your myoepithelial cells kind of embedded in the stroma, as well as your ductal cells or your epithelial cells. So just to recap, pleomorphic adenoma, you'll have a triphasic kind of pattern. You'll have epithelial cells, myoepithelial cells, and your uh, stroma. It's important to know that pleomorphic adenomas are molecularly um, have a chromosome 8 fusion, PLAG1 fusion, or chromosome 12, HMGA2 fusion. Also, pleomorphic adenomas are the number one most common salivary gland neoplasm. They are benign, fortunately, and 5% of pleomorphic adenomas can become carcinoma ex pleomorphic adenomas, meaning that the pleomorphic adenoma becomes a high-grade carcinoma that it can include whether it transforms into a salivary duct carcinoma, a high-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma, or a myoepithelial carcinoma. And just to kind of emphasize how cool the salivary gland pathology is, there is an equivalent in the skin, and that is a benign cutaneous mixed tumor. All right. So the next entity we're going to talk about is Warthin tumor, otherwise known as papillary cyst adenoma lymphomatosum. And this generally arises in the seventh to ninth decade. It's in the parotid tail and it's pet avid. Sometimes it is bilateral. And if it is, it's generally in older men who smoke. And you're the histologic, histocytologic features you want to see are one, lymphocytes, two, oncocytes, and three, kind of dirty, proteinaceous background. The reason why you want these combinations is because if you only have lymphs, then your differential is a uh, lymph node in the salivary gland or lymphoepithelial sialadenitis. If you only see oncocytes, then your differential includes oncocytoma. So on this diff quick stain, we see oncocytes, basically cells that have granular abundant cytoplasm, and that's due to an increased mitochondria, as well as lymphocytes here. And here's a pap stain of the oncocytes. And then you, could, you can see some granular background debris as well although scant. Here is an H and E and you can see that you have the oncocytes here and it's generally bi-layered oncocytes as well as lymphocytes. And it's okay to have germinal centers as well. And you kind of got this fibrovascular core. So that's why it's Warthin tumor are called papillary 
cystadenoma lymphomatosin. So that's your Worthen tumor. That's also Milan category 4A, as well as pleomorphic adenoma is 4A. There is no generally molecularly defined translocation for Worthen. Okay, let's talk about mucoepidermoid carcinoma. That is the most common salivary gland malignant neoplasm amongst both adults and children. And your population of cells you want to see are epidermoid, intermediate, and goblet-type mucus cells. And mucoepidermoid carcinoma can be low, intermediate, or high-grade. And it's important to know and classify these because if it's high-grade, then that may warrant a more extensive surgery, including nodal dissection, as well as possible adjuvant therapy after surgery. And just the general schematic and kind of um, criteria for low-grade as opposed to high-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma is low-grade will have abundant mucin, cyst debris, and bland epidermoid cells. Epidermoid basically means kind of squamous cells or squamoid cells. And then your high-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma include kind of markedly atypical epidermoid cells and you'll have less mucin. So in this DIFQIC, right here, you can see your mucoid cells as well as your epidermoid cells right here. And the cells that are not epidermoid or squamoid nor mucoid, kind of these cells here that have less cytoplasm is your intermediate cells. So you have this kind of three groups of cells, your mucoid, epidermoid, and intermediate. So now you're thinking Worthen tumor. So what does a Worthen tumor look like? It can look varied because you can have a low, intermediate, high grade, but here you can see kind of cyst-like structures. You can see a little bit of mucus cells you can see kind of those epidermoid cells as well. And here is a closer look, kind of trabeculated cord-like pattern. You can see some intermediate cells. Um, you can see some mucoid cells as well as the epidermoid cells um, we saw in the prior specimen or in the prior picture. So, Mucoepidermoid carcinomas are defined genetically by an 1119 translocation, which is CRTC1 mammal 2. So just to recap, we talked about the Milan criteria, how there's one through six, one non-diagnostic, two non-neoplastic, three AUS, four neoplasm, four A is benign, four B is sump, five is suspicious for malignancy, and six is malignant. We talked about pleomorphic adenomas, how you'll have ductal epithelium, myoepithelial cells, and a metachromatic fibrillary stroma. We talked about Worthen tumor, which is papillary cystadenoma lymphomatosum, where you'll want to see oncocytes and lymphocytes, as well as kind of proteinaceous debris. Then we talked about uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma and how that's defined with muc mucoid cells intermediate cells and epidermoid cells and how you can have low grade to high grade, low grade being um, more mucoid cells and less epidermoid cells. And then high grade is much more atypical um, epidermoid cells. So thank you for watching Pathagonia and we hope that you'll tune in for the next episode. Bye and have a great rest of the day. Bye.